Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire. You can like us on Facebook. We're on YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes. We are also syndicated on J Rev Radio and Voluntary Virtues. We are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. And pro cider, I guess. That's yeah, what where's the moonshine, man? Moonshine's in the fridge. I decided to. to I turned down uh, for what the show, side, and then we got uh, we got wine over here <laughs> as well. He's, he's trying wine. to be uh, sophisticated. Yes. Anyways, I'm Ron with us. I am Joel Valenzuela, and I'm Shire Dude, Andrew Familial Shire Dude, and we have we're taking a page out of Nate's life today. Nate's life Yo, is our guest. <laughs> oh man, how nice. you doing, Nate? I'm quite well. How's that? How's that pork treating you? It's delicious. It's uh, I've been on a little pork kick lately. You know. Yeah. Drinking the pork. Drink of the port. Mm. You've been docked at port for a while, haven't you? <laughs> um, I suppose. Yeah, you could you could say that. So, um, why are we? What do you? Have, why do we have you on the show again? I forget. Uh, good question. Is it because <laughs> of your? Is it because of your sexy chest that you're so seductively? Do you shave your chest? I don't. I'm, I mean, you know, I get that all the time. Actually, people ask me. That's, I'm just naturally, uh, you know, not a hairy dude. Yeah, no, that's, I'm I feel sorry for you. No, no, dude, it's good. You know what uh, it is? It's a blessing. People who have, I love it. People who have a lot of hair here tend to like lose it up here. Mm. I've noticed that. That's very true. Like my uncle, he's bald and he has a big chest hair. He always has p- poofing out there. Mm. My dad just migrates. South. My dad has just as bad as much hair as Nate, and he has a full head of hair, and he's mm. like six. Do you know? 60s. Do you know why that is? It's related to testosterone, and that male balding is a result of uh, test- some kind of testosterone buildup in the scalp or a testosterone um, uh, derivative or whatever. So, yeah, anyway, so people, so, so men with lots of testosterone in their system are, tend to be hairy, and they also tend to bald. And then men with less testosterone will keep their hair and are less hair. So much the more testosterone you have, the less hair you have. On your head, and the more hair you have on your body. Oh. Mm. The more so like you the have, like... Bald. No testosterone? Is that what Me? you're trying to say? Oh, no. I mean, I've got plenty. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> on. I, on the lo- I guess I got, I got a lower j- average. I got a jar in the end, fridge. It I got works. a jar in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I mean, I'll, I'll now, hey, testosterone. Now, Shire, dude, I've never seen you naked, which is a very sad thing. I should do this one of these <laughs> days. But in the meantime, <laughs> do you have a hairy chest? Uh, no, it's actually pretty sparse. So yeah. you're pretty much hairless except for – so you're going to be pretty good with the head situation, right? What about your dad? What does he look like? Oh, my dad's bald. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. hairy is his chest? Uh, pretty, pretty dang hairy. It, so, see, how many years see? do you have? Uh, well, that's the thing. Is is because uh, I I can see the. It doesn't. I see it in you. It's the way. You come I, I don't, I'm not trying to burst your bubble, but I see it coming. Well, no, I think here's the, here's the deal. All right. Misery loves company. <laughs> I, I got the nuclear option. It's going to happen at some point. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, I, I'm well aware. I, I I admit it live here on uh, on the show. Yeah, I'm, we'll shave it off. Oh yeah, my dad. I'm was not going to do a colon where once it gets to a certain point, it's gone. He had like do the George Julie, Costanza. And do you then, know Julius Caesar invented the comb over? I just learned that today. Hmm. Really? No oh, shit. Yeah. Anyways, wh- wh- why do we have Nate here? But, uh, yes, that's what the show's about. I want to Nate is a special Nate. guest. Mm-hmm. Well, Put for on one thing, let, body here. let's start out with <laughs> this one thing right here. Okay, you. Are a, like a native, like you've lived in New Hampshire your whole dang life. Oh, almost. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. You've lived all around the state. You're not some like jet setter running around all the place. You're like mm. a salt of the earth kind of guy, you know. No doubt. Like you're you're the kind of guy. You're the anti free stater in a lot of ways. In that, <laughs> like, you are as New Hampshire as the old man in the mountain himself. Except oh wow! He, except that's he's Jesus. Except that's, that's he, uh, wow. That's quite the compliment. Except he's <laughs> dead, and you're still here. Wow. Yeah, he parted his face So does that off. make me better than the old man of the mountain? I would say so. You're yeah. the new, you're the so, new old man. <laughs> Whoa. So tell me about this invasive species known as the porcupines we see in the background here. What, yeah. How does that? What, what is your perspective, Len? Sure. What do you think of porcupines? And well, tell me about. Tell us about how you first this got first got to like notice porcupines. What your initial mm. findings were, and then now what you think, all that stuff. Cool. Go ahead, talk. Yeah. So. Um, I, I didn't even know about the Free State Project until, like, um, the Ron Paul primary started in, in the uh, late late of 2011. Um, you know, he announced his campaign, and I started, I you know, I jumped right in and started working in New Hampshire, and I met Porcupines then. Um, so prior to that, I didn't even know about the Free State Project. Didn't even know about it. Even though I, I you know, I was familiar with Ron Paul in, in the prior election and everything like that, I didn't get involved, so... 
Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I literally met. I met uh, Chris Lawless was one of the first persons I first for first uh, porcupines I met. You mean Ron Paul's freaking giant? Not Ron Paul's freaking giant. Um, who else did I meet right off the bat? Um, uh, Kevin. Uh, Mon- Kevin, B- Kevin Bloom. Bloom, right? Mongo. Um, Kevin Bloom. Um, so yeah, so those folks I, I met right away, and that's um, and it was awesome. Um, I was I was. I, I thought it was great, you know, that this was going on. Um, Were you in, uh, like, a constitutionalist phase at all during, like, the Ron Paul thing? Or hardly. Just, did you just skip past that? Hardly, yeah, no, uh, no. I always had a very volunteerist tinge to my, um, you know, outlook on huh. things, kind of a hippie kind of thing that I picked up. So did you ever I, have, like, a status-leaning thing, or were you just always never, either? Never, no, no. So you were always just kind of either just uninformed, didn't care, or just want freedom? period yeah yeah definitely freedom i was always breaking the rules in school and you know trying to push the limits and stuff nate's life who was a rebel <laughs> <laughs> he got in trouble yeah. in school Detention. <laughs> <laughs> Detention. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you've been in the community for i guess now what three years four years um, three years i wouldn't i mean kind of yeah yeah you could say that but i mean you've I, been I, in depth since i've been here R- right, but I mean, I would say I moved to Manchester in September, so almost a year now. I moved, so you know, it's been we, like eleven. We months. We moved the same time. Yeah, and that's really when I got involved with the free, with the scene here. Prior to that, I just knew people, you know, like Facebook friends and like you know shit like that. Like I never really was hanging out. So, so do you think we're a bunch of fucking weirdos? Um, yeah, what's it like no. hanging around with a bunch of? Uh, yeah, because you know, we're we're like staters. like <laughs> you actually have like roots and community and a bit of normalcy to you if you want to. We have none of that. So what? What is it? What is it like hanging about with a bunch of total freaks? Well, that's not true. You got uh, well. You you use the daywalker uh, analogy, and I like that. Oh yeah. And you guys are all daywalkers for sure, and uh, all that. But you know, there's it's it's a unique. It's a very unique uh, crowd. Um, but they're, yeah, there's not they're not weirdos by any means. I think it's a pretty like. I think it's actually. Ooh, that's my phone. Um, I think it's actually pretty consistent. I think it's pretty consistent like cross section of the movement in general. You know what I mean? So, um, I think that's that's cool. Yeah. So, all in all, the invasive species, like, is it? Are free staters in a way more New Hampshire than a lot of other New Hampshireites in terms of bringing the spirit, the mm. live for your die spirit back? Yeah, you bringing could, sexy back. No, no doubt, you could say that, especially in terms of uh, the southern, you know, the southern New Hampshire population down here. I mean, yeah, that. Yeah, it's. Uh, it's definitely not. Um, you guys have to bring contrast to that for sure. So. Well, what's the southern population here that you think? What do you think they're like? Well, it's you know, yeah, they're yeah, exactly. Like you know, they're Ma- Massachusetts. You know, people who move from Massachusetts or Connecticut or you know elsewhere too. But just like they bring like that, like you know, uptight New England like bullshit up to New Hampshire. You know, and it's just like. It's really not like that here. If you get back to the, you know, if you really get back to the smaller towns and you, you know, you find natives like generations of people that lived here, you know, you just did that. They don't tolerate that. They don't like it. And you know, so yeah, I thought it was very funny because on Independence Day or Independence Day weekend, we went around the state doing um, New Hampshire Independence Day protests mm. or demonstrations, talking about well, basically leading up to secession from the United States of America. And the reception we got was shockingly positive on a day that we, you'd think that people would get this, like, America, like, knee-jerk reaction. And th- that, was one of the, that was one of the best days of my life is just, just seeing how New Hampshire is so out of the union already in its sort of mindset. And it was pretty, mm. it was pretty crazy. And has it always been that way as far as you've been concerned? Um, I don't know. I think, I think like, I th- I think we have the same like page like the same America, you know, that same like stereotypical patriotism that is common in the rest of the country. Like I think we have that still here, but um, people, people are a little ha- smarter about it. They like I think they like what it stands for. Then they still don't worship the government. Like you know what I mean? Like like. Well, that and a lot of people here seem to like just locals in general love New Hampshire. Like you see a lot of people like oh, with yeah. New Hampshire tattoos and yeah. you know like loving the brands. Fact- I know kids who did a brand on themselves. New oh. Hampshire brand. What? Yeah, they burnt really like in yeah like like cattle. Oh yeah, have to pull, wow. I'll have to pull it up. Yeah, I'll have to pull it up later. That's a little hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I think it was interesting because I, one thing I do sometimes is I go around door to door knocking on people people's doors, 
for Americans for Prosperity asking questions about like people's views and stuff. And I remember it's it's weird the amount of pro smaller government Democrats you'll find around here is just <laughs> weird as yeah. hell. And I remember one one per, one old lady I knocked on her door and she's <laughs> like, oh, she liked Obamacare, but and then she she identified as liberal, like two to three out of like the one to nine spectrum. And then when I asked about uh, taxes, and then she she chuckled. She <laughs> this is new, she said this is New Hampshire. We lower taxes. <laughs> and it was like yeah. a Democrat, a, a definite like yeah. lefty right. in New Hampshire is still like, this is New Hampshire. We lower taxes here. You're right. There's a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool. It's different. So how did you get involved in the whole political machine? Because you seem to be not because like. I went to school for statesmanship, which is related to political science. Mm. I've been interning and working in all these kind of public policy organizations forever. Like, I have an excuse to be involved in this kind of field, but, like, yeah. you don't seem to be from that at all. And how did you get involved in politics to begin with? Um, well, it, it started with, you know, Ron Paul. You know, Everything I, good what, started what, with Ron Paul. What did Paul. you do for Ron Paul? Uh, well, in uh, 2008, I voted for him. Um, and it stopped there for me. I watched I watched the debates on cable television. That's actually the first time I saw him. Um, it was on cable television, and I watched a couple of debates, and then I, st- I, and I you know, looked him up on the net, and I was like, all right, he's got my vote. Um, you know, and that was cool. Um, and then, I didn't, and then I, didn't, I didn't get involved at that point. I didn't really, under, I didn't, you know. Yeah. But then as soon as he announced, I, I jumped in heads, heads first to 2011. So. Yeah, it um, seems like Ron Paul... Is the nation the national scales version of Ian Freeman on the New Hampshire <laughs> scale of it's like everyone's like first everyone's first experience with the free state or for the most part tends to be Ian free Freeman and Live. Free Talk Live yeah. and then they just come here and yeah. then Ron Paul seems to be most people's red pill moment across the nation and it's like right. just the volume of people you talk to of the most hardcore people who are red pilled by Ron Paul mm. is just crazy yeah. I mean that dude that guy we better. Mm. I mean, he, he's not long for this he'll world. He'll go down, yeah. He'll go down in history, like centuries from now. You know, it might not. You know, he won't. Not in our generation, he won't get any credit. But in our lifetime, you know. Oh, I'm giving. The future, I'm, I'm giving the credit right now. Yeah, yeah. Ron Paul is freaking giant. Yeah. Centuries from now, he's gonna be something. Ron Paul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one Ron will. Rem- no one will remember him for his yeah. ill-fitting suit anymore. Yeah. Everyone will just remember that he changed the fucking world. Yeah. yeah so, you're. You've been involved not just like generically liberty, but in a lot of these more establishment kind of ways, like Young Americans for Liberty, Students for Liberty, and things like yeah. that. The organizations that bizarrely in the free state and the free state movement don't tend to be the first go to for liberty. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think about that whole being involved in the system thing yeah. as opposed to just we're agorist men and just going completely off the grid? Yeah. Well, to fill in the rest of the story, you know, he asked me, wh- uh, I'm sorry, Rob asked me what I did for Ron Paul. So, um, you know, I, where I volunteered in, in uh, Concord as the Concord co-chair for the campaign under the Merrimack County chair, Ron Noyes. Some people might know him. Uh, <coughs> so anyways, I did that, and I worked my butt off for months. And then the Youth for Paul people came into, into New Hampshire for the primaries week, for the, and um, I didn't even know, you know, and I met all those people. And that is basically why, yeah, I don't know if people don't know that, but that's, that's you know, Jeff Frazee and, and Ed King ran that, and their whole team ran that. Now, so just so you know, I used to work with Ed King across the hall from me in 2008 nice. in his Leadership Institute. So yeah. I know, I know. All this. Yeah, you know I, all everyone knows people. everyone. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's funny. Um, I couldn't believe it. I saw you on Facebook. Later. I was like, holy cow, we have like 250 mutual friends. I was like, wow, that's crazy. We have 250. But They're all the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, they're all liberty people, but yeah, so but not so, just liberty people, but so like as far as Rob and I have like eight hundred mutual Something friends like or that. more than wow, that. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. But yeah, as far as working for you know the establishment or whatever you want, not esta- I don't those that group's not establishment in my opinion whatsoever. But well, it influences the establishment. It does, and they and they're not afraid to work with them, and they're not afraid to you know and all that. But um, so you know why all those are my people. They 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 scoop me up from New Hampshire and they put me on the road with them. Uh, in Nevada and wa- in uh, Las Vegas and then in Seattle, and um, so I should have gone to Colorado too, but I didn't really work that out right. And then, so anyways, they hooked me up. They hooked me up with a job with Right to Work in Kentucky after that for the general election, um, 
and you know so they're just like it's just an awesome network you know what i mean they're really that's what i appreciate about it and we don't always see i, I don't always see eye to eye with them you know i get emails that i snort at and stuff but <laughs> you know it's uh, <coughs> about them legals <laughs> but they're great they're great people to work with and i really appreciate it and they'll, they'll help and you know if you'll put in the work they'll they'll help you like 100 percent. you know what i mean like if you're willing if any any activist or young activist wants to get involved and like do the work they will back you up just to tell everything you need, you know what I mean? So that's, that's Yeah, well. I've noticed that, and <clears throat> the reason I'm here and not in D.C. is because I realize that working within the system is not necessarily the, the strongest and the best way we can influence the future of liberty. Mm -hmm. However, I have always liked, I mean, for lack of a better term, beltway tarians because they tend to be educated. Yeah, professionalism. Yeah, educated and professional, and they they got their shit dialed, and they tend to also have a little little bit less of an objectivist tinge to them, and that mm. they're willing to like actually help other people and right. help the cause at cost to themselves personally. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, for example, around here who tend to move here to hide. Just they move here and they disappear, and they don't want to like actually do anything to advance liberty. And it's like, I, I appreciate. Even if it's m even saying it were misguided to try to influence the political system at all, yeah. it, I appreciate that kind of effort that you're going out there and actually doing something and doing it with professionalism and dedication, things like that. And that's mm -hmm. why I've always kind kind of kept one foot in the system influencing wing of liberty. I always like it. I like to see some people come here and just do something. Like it doesn't have to be political. Like there's enough here in the community to do something for the community. Like if you're hiring free or pe mm -hmm. people in the liberty community, to me that's something. You're doing something. You're offering you know, services or a value to the community. Like I mean, most people come here because they actually want to change. You know, I came here because I want to change the world. Like I don't. I just don't want to change New Hampshire. Like uh, not just for myself, but the entire world. I think can be changed from the people that are coming here. Um, to move and the people that are already getting involved with like like yourself like in the community um, the stuff that we're doing here the uh, the community that's being built the ideas of freedom that are becoming more popular like this will change I, sometimes I always feel like we're going through like I'm walking through history because I feel like this will change the world hopefully in my lifetime if not if not you know it won't but mm -hmm. at least I know that I am trying to do something with my life and trying to change something that I see is wrong mm -hmm. I think the Free State Project can change the world in our lifetime. Yeah. I, I do believe it can be done. If you believe. Do, do you believe, Nate? I believe. <laughs> I, be I, believe. <laughs> I believe. What do you yeah. th what do you think the locals are gonna react to when, you know, instead of there just being fifteen, sixteen hundred of us, there's, you know, five, six, seven thousand of us. Yeah, not we're not even talking about I'm the I'm not 20, even talking 000. about the twenty thousand. I'm right. just saying like tr you know, triple just, our numbers now. What do you, what I think the locals will think? Yeah. What do you mean well, by the depends. end of the year? I mean <laughs> I, I mean it depends on how, you know, the the be what happens, what the behavior is like and whatever, you know. I hope uh you know, I, 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 I totally believe in the in the movement, so I'm sure it'll be it'll be good. Um Well yeah, the movement's based on like getting along with other people, right? Yeah. Which isn't always easy. Non-aggression principle. Firsthand, but still. I mean, you move, a, you know, a massive amount of peaceful people into an area. I would only imagine it would become more peaceful. Mm. Yeah. Well, the only thing is, like, you already see the, the stop free keen crowd, like, you know, being kind of violent. True, sure. the Kenyans. Yeah. But the Kenyans. Like, but it, so that's kind of like, to that's me. That's kind of what I was suggesting. Yeah, you know, to me, that's kind of like a microcosm what could happen in but the then, rest of the state. But their numbers are dwindling, right? And you've got all these. And there's you know, a reason for that. I don't think, I don't, you know, I, I support everybody's, you know, right to activism and do whatever you want. But I think that some things are more effective than others and some things could potentially be, you know, mm. detrimental. And, yeah, you I know, we should be aware of how you're you're. you're Affecting people, you are. I think. I think as individuals, we are responsible for how we make other people feel in a way. You exactly. I mean? like you have to. You have to be aware of that to an extent. You can't. Obviously, you can't. You know, like you can't always be like there, P super PC and like. But you do want to like be aware of that and influence them in a positive. It depends on positive feelings. It depends on what your objective of your activism is. Yeah. Like this right here, what we're doing right here. This isn't really for. New Hampshire people like what we're doing is trying to talk to people that aren't here yet to move and mm. kind of spread the message of liberty that way we're talking about what's going on here now mind you if it wakes up locals fantastic that's like a net benefit mm. but I mean like like a lot of like you know Kenyans I kind of view like their activism is more so showing 
you know how to live like a free you know like a like they're they're pushing the needle way beyond like what most activists do but because they film it and they talk about it it goes on the internet people read it they get inspired you know Derek J's victimless crime spree next thing you know me and Andrew are signing the pledge and we're <laughs> we're making the move yep. you know what I'm saying so like I agree that it's probably some of their activism isn't the greatest mm. for locals mm. but I don't I when I when I say for locals, that's probably true, but for the you know the internet at large, sure, that's a whole different story. It's a whole different is a net benefit in that way because there's a lot of people here that move because they see what was going on in Keene. Yeah, yeah. Now I'd like to add a thing about on that note. Uh, last this Sunday afternoon, I was going in to get some work done with Ian, and uh, there was a police encounter right outside the place of work where we were at and some guy was getting arrested and hauled away over some license issue some bullshit again some victimless completely victimless crime and so we started filming a cop walking of course because that's what we do and the bystanders who were relatives and friends of the the person being arrested were initially came over initially requested we stop filming because they're like it's embarrassing this and that and they were not very happy with us in the beginning. Then we informed them what, what we're doing here. Instead of going a, I have a right to film kind of thing and trying to force that issue and making enemies, we were going, well, look, we're just trying to make sure no abuse happened. We're trying to look out for you guys. And they turned completely around and were really happy and grateful by the end of the encounter because we just said, look, all we're here to do is just make sure you guys don't get abused by the police. And she's like, I hate the Manch PD and good job. Thanks mm. for doing this and stuff. It, it, they came over with a confrontational thing in mind, but then they came away with like, oh, these guys are just our friendly neighborhood cop blockers just making sure no one gets beat down like in fucking Mississippi now. Yeah, Gosh. what is going on in Ferguson? Like I watched a couple of YouTube videos Sorry, of what's going on there. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Like if you don't know that the police state's intact, like in place now, like – right. I mean, that, I kind of woke up with the whole, like, you know, Boston the strong. Boss, you're, now, Boston. you're a local. Like, that's, gonna, yeah, gonna yeah, yeah. I saw that, and, like, mm-hmm. holy shit. Like, you know, like, SWAT teams going down the street, going door to door. But, like, you see mm-hmm. all these military vehicles with sound cannons and shooting out uh, tear gas and all of uh, them having fully automatic weapons. They look like stormtroopers going through the street, like, mm-hmm. shooting, you know, shooting tear gas at, you know, <laughs> peaceful protesters about someone being killed. You know, against the police, yeah. and that's having that's and like you see the, the amount of people out there that you would think that's like you know Istanbul, Turkey, or yeah. you know that's um, in Egypt or something like that. No, 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 that's yeah, Missouri. Era. Right, and the whole area in Boston, at least everything was on Missouri. lockdown. Everybody, oh yeah, that's you know, too. Like yeah. you couldn't be outside your house; you were like contained to your home. Like, and oh. didn't New Hampshire send some stormtroopers out there too? The Keen Bearcat went uh, there. That's new. That. That's news to me, but I wouldn't be surprised if New Hampshire sent stuff down to Boston. Yeah, it was a dark time. Yeah. And not because people got blown up. Right. I mean, that, that's a hard thing to say. Right. But it's like people getting blown up in the marathon was the least macabre thing of the whole experience. And that's, that's really sad. Hmm. Yeah, oh. it's, uh, it's just seeing the, um, that on TV was, God, I, I remember watching it live. I'm, I can't believe that this is happening. Oh, you watched it live? Huh? Yeah, I remember watching it live. I had, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I can't believe this is happening at, mm. in America. But you, you know what's funny? The donkeys were still all open. Yeah, <laughs> just saying, <laughs> they were seriously yeah. all the build, all the businesses were closed down except they kept <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts open. I still see Boston Strong stuff at like Dunkin' Donuts and other places, oh, yeah. and I get sick to my stomach seeing that. I'm like, mm. this is like propaganda. Well, that I'm, they're literally selling. I'm one of the Dunkins. big proponents and pioneers of the hashtag Boston Week. I use that all over the place <laughs> without apology, right. no nice. apology. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, but I mean, in their defense, Boston's a pretty strong city as far as cities go. If there well, was a I city, if there, was a, city, people, if there yeah. was a city that you could define as strong, in my opinion, Boston's up in the top like five easily. It, you know, it's funny. Doug Stanhope, the com- great comedian, he was talking about New York. He was doing some special in New York, and he was talking about how miserable it is and how comedy works in miserable situations. And then he started making fun of them because every good comic knows how to make fun of the city they're in, right? Not just, yeah, right, New York. And he was like, you guys pretend you're all tough. And you're in New York, I'm tough. And then you have, you know, New- Bloomberg's cock so far up your ass that you can't, <laughs> like, you can't do anything. It's like, you pretend to be strong, you're fucking pussies, y'all. 
<laughs> and that was a very good kind of point that the strong people are us in New Hampshire, yeah. right? Yeah. And just people that just know how to rely on themselves exactly. and don't bend over for every fucking clown in a badge right. and a fucking blue suit. No doubt. And it's like, oh, we're tough people because we just bend over in front of the fucking cops all the time and just have, listen to, right. give all our money to the state and just like – no, the tough people are like the people in like mm. the far corners of Alaska, you know, the little north part, you know, New Hampshire, mm. places like, you know, Wyoming where there isn't anything, right. like stuff like that. That's where the tough people are. That's where the real respectable people are. I mean, you go to like, I mean, I know Boston's like a tough city, but it's tough, but it's like, nah. Yeah, <laughs> you man. Know what I'm saying? Like a good measure of strength is like how much shit are you willing to deal with from your government? How much shit are you going to put up with? Right. That's, that's, a here, sign, that's a sign of strength. Here, it's a tiny, tiny bit of shit, and that yeah, shows yeah, our strength yeah. right there. There you go. There yeah. you go. Uh, let's let's change subject a little quick, because both of you, Shire Dude and Nate, both of you guys do agorism and deal Bitcoin, correct? Mm-hmm. All right. True. Not, not the Are you guys shitting record. your pants right now with what the price of Bitcoin's at? <laughs> um, not particularly. Anything. Really? You're not worried? I mean, it dropped to almost like $400 like yeah. a couple of days ago. You know, it's just a buy-in. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm like... Just so you know, this week, you know, not not bragging, but I finally got my first over one Bitcoin. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Yeah. So only thank you, Bitcoin, for being so fucking low that I could actually be Bitcoin balling in here. Yeah, I'm just mad that I can't buy more right now. I I do not buy Bitcoins. I sell Federal Reserve notes. All right. (laughs) <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah I, I, I whatever I whatever I get my uh, you know I, I I'm the dealer. I'm selling Federal Reserve notes. Like you know I, I got a supply. I'm trying to get rid of. Like who wants to buy some? And if you're objectivist girl, you don't sell Federal Reserve notes. You, you burn, burn, them, burn them, and then people donate bitcoins for watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, seriously though, like this guy, man. Like I bring a date in. I'm going to try and he goes up to him and starts, goes up to her and starts talking about it. I'm not using their money and stuff like that. She has <laughs> wait, no, wait, wait. She has no fucking it? clue who they are or their money, what that <laughs> means. <laughs> well, I'm who sorry. You man? bring her okay, into okay. the heart of the, you know, I guess like the trial. anarchist movement. <laughs> I'm supposed to, like, you know, like backtrack like 10 years of my life and say, oh, these are Federal Reserve notes. Da, 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 da. Yeah, like, I you know. know. Trial I figured by you fire. would have trained her. In 1913. <laughs> yeah, trial by fire. All I'm just saying is hashtag never go full keen. That's oh. not full keen, but that's just like. <laughs> I know. It is still funny. Fuck their government and fuck their money. I don't want to use it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, hey, we, we got it for the moment, but right. you know it's really exciting, and I will a little bit of a something in the news. So Scott Coin has been doing really well. And that's really what I love is when some weird local alt currency just has these news items happening. It's like, what does that mean for Bitcoin? Like if the teeny thing that no one knows what the fuck it is, is doing well, how much better can Bitcoin be doing in integration? So Scott Coin, for example, for one, is getting its first online wallet, right? Online wallet in addition to the smartphone app, right? Also, on one, of most, <laughs> one of the most one of the most famous musicians in Scotland, which I forget his name, is selling his new album for Scott Coin and nothing else. He's not accepting FRNs, not accepting Bitcoin. He's only accepting Scott Coin. That's pretty hardcore. That's pretty hardcore. And when people who didn't previously want to adopt Bitcoin, like yeah, this freaking funny money, whatever it is. And they're all getting on board because it's a, it's like a regional thing that resonates with them. That's like a slippery slippery slope to accepting Bitcoin because now they're using something almost like it. So full global Bitcoin adoption is like right around that corner there. I'm just like excited. There just, was I just had to share that. At the Bitcoin meetup on Sunday because for the, the listeners at home in Manchester has the, viewers the, at home. has the longest, to my knowledge, the longest, longest running, running yeah. uh, Bitcoin meetup, weekly meetup. I don't have glasses that far. I can read that. Wait, wait, wait. At any rate, um, the uh, Manchester has the longest running Bitcoin meetup every One Sunday. Nine. All right. So, a uh, there's a couple. Of, there's a bunch of new people there, which I, I which is is kind of you know sometimes you get to know everyone that goes always shows up to the meetups and a couple of new movers and some liberal financier guy came, uh, and he was uh, British no less, and he was talking about. Uh, he went on this whole diatribe about uh, the, against Bitcoin and the Federal Reserve. Like, you know, it was so great that they printed money. They just threw money on a fire. They burnt money, but it saved 
the you know the building and then he's talking about how like yeah these people in scotland they don't know what's going on you know they're they have no idea what's going to happen if uh they secede from uk and i always find like look I support them seceding from, you know, voting themselves away, getting away from the UK just as much as I support New Hampshire. For the viewers at home, what he's trying to say is he threw down. I I, I threw it down on him, and it was like he, he went off on Scottish independence, and he went off on, you know, it was like and then he went down when I when I mentioned New Hampshire independence and like you know not taking my money, like what's mine is mine. Of course, what's the next you know reasonable response from a status like that? Well, who will build the roads? <laughs> Is that what he really said? Who yeah. will build the roads? Yeah, he um, really went to the roads. They kinda. all do, though. That's they always why do. It's like they're it's like they're trained in their mind. Like <laughs> they they so have funny. like a list of what they have to go down. And the roads are the, the one roads, thing. The roads, the police, can. the hospital. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, and I might have said this before on the show, but the one thing, if I were a hardcore statist, right, and I'm talking about what anarchy could not provide, I wouldn't go to the roads first. I would go to like. What about rule of law? Who's going to, if you steal something, who's going to go take it back? And, like, if you get wronged, who get assaulted, who's going to put that criminal away? That would be my first go-to. I, my first go-to would be who would pick the cotton. Yes. Oh, dude, yeah. don't maul me, please. <laughs> this is a sacred spot. Keep that fucker out of here, Who okay? will pick the cotton? <laughs> yeah, but the roads, who, it's, it's so funny because it's become, my roads has become such a meme in the liberty community. That it's like, but it still happens. You just talk to, you can't hear a state as saying that and just not crack up because yeah. it's just like the road. The thing is, they don't even know their status. Yeah, they don't even. You see a status, they, don't even, they, don't even, they, have no, they have no idea what that even means. Yeah. <clears throat> They're so ingrained into the so idea. So how do we reach those people? Like, how do we, how do we, is it, do we have to find their their one little pet project and then like, and I then try, like open their eyes to how liberty can, ex, one, ex, you know, One that? day at a time. One thing I try to do when I'm talking to a status, especially like a liberal status or whatnot, because usually conservative status you can kind of always approach differently from like the whole ron paul thing and taxes and guns and shit sure. like that um when you talk to a liberal that's a very status and they're all about these programs you know like you know welfare and health care and education and all that jazz and i tell them look i am not against anything that you're probably for in fact i'm probably for a hundred percent of what you're for mm. i'm just against you uh having someone else come to me and steal from me to pay for what you are for Violence, man. Right. You know, no, seriously, like, that, that's what it's all about. That's the big chink in the armor, is violence. Is because they're you know that's the one thing they want gun control for and stuff like that is because they don't want guns on the streets and violence and shooting people, and it's the very emotional thing. And it's like, how's okay, that working look, out in Ferguson? <sighs> well, yeah, they say they don't want guns on the streets, but you need guns. Well, look at them. They roll out tanks and not tanks, but like you know, exactly. armored personnel carriers. You need weapons to take weapons away from people. So you just who would have shoot the black dudes? Right? Only cops with guns. Yeah, you don't want no guns. You want only cops to have guns. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah. it's like they're so trustworthy. Every hmm. single thing they want to do, they're like, "Well, this shouldn't be legal. That shouldn't be legal." It's like, "Well, what are you going to do about it?" Well, we make a law. Well, who enforces that law, and how do they enforce it? So if you're saying don't want guns on the street, you want some of these SWAT dudes who are just shooting up everyone, just kicking down doors and just stealing people's guns from from people who've never done anything wrong, and it's just like, you know, I have to share this. Today I saw a BuzzFeed video. Again, not bragging, right? But it was a BuzzFeed video on about a five anti-gun lefties who shoot for the first time. And it was a really good one because yeah. none of them changed their position by the end of it. But for one thing, they're just total gun noobs. But they all enjoyed the experience. Yeah. They all got an adrenaline rush. Mm. And this one girl in particular was just like, Oh, I don't. I I feel kind of guilty for enjoying it. Like I'm not supposed to. And it's like you think she's talking about like anal or something like that. It's yeah, like sure. it's pretty funny. It's like, and I, guns, for the left, are like, what drugs sex, for the right? Or no, what yeah, like kinky, there you go. What yeah, kinky yeah, sex? Yeah, yeah. What, Absolutely. Well, let me even say gay sex <laughs> for the right. It's like the guiltiest of pleasures that like, you know how many Republicans have been like outed and have their, their gay sex scandals. Haven't you noticed that Democrats never have gay sex scandals? They have just straight sex they scandals. <laughs> it's kind of funny yeah. the way that happens, but it's like That's true. it's their guilty pleasure. It's like oh, I shot a. It's like someone needs to do a parody of that Katy Perry <laughs> song that I shot. I shot a gun and I liked it. 
Ooh, yeah. You know what I'm that saying? That Shire Dew material. Get on that. <laughs> Get on it. So you, well, Shire, you were in California, and you were an Obama supporter, no less, right? Uh, well, no, I wouldn't say Obama supporter. Voter. Here's what happened. Yeah, Obama voter. What, uh, let's, I was, let's hear your I was going to vote for McCain. for being a statist. I was going to vote that's for like, McCain. That's even better. Yeah, I know. It was terrible. I, I voted for McCain in 08. Um, because I, I voted for Obama in 08. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right. You did? I did. So we're in the same boat. You actually oh, did? I voted for Ron, for Ron Paul in the primary. And then I voted for Obama because I, I had uh, family overseas at the time in Iraq, and I believed him when he said he would bring him home. Wow. That's I the same that's, reason that's, that I, I believe, voted for Obama. I believed him. Yeah. I said, you can have your so- did- I said, you can have your socialist health care scheme and ruin the country, but if you can get my cousins home, you know. Yeah, I just wanted to bring the troops home. That's pretty sweet. But what he did was just tenfold all the wars. And then, yeah, and now mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. Like, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about hey. disillusionment right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Like I like to say that I lo- I owe most of my disillusionment to Barack Obama. So thanks, buddy. You know. Who do you think has made more pe- like push more people to the liberty community, the movement, Ron Paul or Barack Obama? Oh man, hmm. that's a tough one. I mean, like, I'm going to uh, come out strong for Ron Paul. I'm going to go with Ron Paul too. Yeah, I think so. Because like Ron, Ron, Obama might have turned people off from government, but he, he wouldn't have turned them into libertarian activists. That's true. Hmm. But he he has uh, Obama has pushed a hell of a lot of people because they kind of see what the government can be. Yeah. You know, and like, like that really woke up a lot of conservatives and a lot of Republicans because they pretty much were turning a blind eye because their guy was in office. Hmm. You know, it's a shame like all those liberals that were anti-war disappeared the moment their guy was in office. Yep. You know, because oh, yeah. I was all on board all with you know yep. what they were saying, and then their guy gets in office and crickets. They, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very tribalist, and it pisses me well, off. I mean, at least, I mean, I wish it's it's sad because the left at this point in time isn't as left us, right? The left has left all their principles because Obama, as a, not just that it's their guy, but it's Obama the Messiah, right? Because he's in there, and he's like the total royal flush of everything they've been trying to do and he's doing the exact opposite it's so hard for them to stick with their principles i mean you could do like a bill clinton or something like that and just go against the and just be like ah well he doesn't represent a leftist ideology like i believe but obama you know just everything about him it, it's just so hard to be like look this isn't our guy i hate him yeah i mean i'd argue that they never really had the principles in the first place a lot of them didn't. Yeah, right. right. And it's just been the doublespeak all along. And so you grew to disillusionment. And so now you see that they know they never had the principles. But you think it's no longer, whereas it's never had. Well, it's, very, it's very cultural and societal. Yeah. You know, they, cause one thing I do like about Democrats and liberals is that they're socially liberal. You know, I, I wish the conservative side of people were socially liberal. You know, there's unfortunately that's where libertarians come in. I know there's lib- leftist libertarians and whatnot, but um, a lot of libertarians get their roots from being on the conservative side and going farther down the rabbit hole. You know, um, but at least they're socially liberal. But there's not that many socially liberal conservatives, unfortunately. Yeah, mm. they're not conservatives anymore at that point. Yeah. Well, they can be conservative government, man. I'm, I don't think they should be. <laughs> but I mean, I'll take that over them. You know, being anti-gay and anti-immigrant. Yeah, that's the one thing. Anti-immigrant, that's how quickly you can find out about how people, how principled conservatives yeah. actually are. Because are for liberty. You don't just talk about, like you talk about the police state that you need to put in place in order to actually secure the border and like the papers please, like Nazi kind of Germany sort of world you'd have to enact to verify people's papered government approved right to exist. Mm. And it's like if people, if they don't at least open their eyes a little bit to that, you just know they're just shells. And I like to be able to out people for being shells. There was a guy at the Quill of all places. Oh, wait, here we go. This is, I like the story. Do you, yeah, you were there for that, right? He was talking no, but about. I was there is this, is this one of the new guys that just moved yeah. up here? Uh, I don't believe he's new. I think he's been around for a while. Um, I, and I'm not going to say his name, but he was there, and he was he was saying that borders are okay. Like he's totally fine with borders and keeping illegals out whereas if you come legally then it's okay and then his argument was it like they were just grilling him of course he's in the freaking quill how the fuck do you how do you how do you end up at the quill yeah of all the quill and then be for borders he he's still like an activist and i mean i didn't get his whole story but uh and they boiled him down and down and down until finally he said you know what here's the thing is i'm 
okay with it. Like it doesn't hurt me. And so I'm fine with it. And then I said, well, wait a minute. Like, how can you be pro this if the only argument for it that you have left is I'm okay with it? Like what, what is good? Why should it be in place at all? And he said, well, cause you get citizenship. Cause it, that's, that's how you get citizenship. And then I said, well, you're not saying anything with that. What's good about citizenship? Yeah. What is good about it? And he had no response. Yeah, and the one thing that I constantly point out is, like, when I talk about people illegals or, pay, you know, no papers, I just say they're the lucky ones. <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. I, wish I, you know, I wish all of us were illegal. I want to be undocumented, yeah. Yeah. I would gladly rescind my citizenship and all my papers and documents yeah, and whatnot. Expensive. Well, I would. Well, they would I wouldn't they do would, that. They would deport me if I did that. Exactly. I wouldn't do that because of the problems being a not not legal citizen happens. For example, I was uh, when I studied international law in the UK. One of my professors there, uh, Charles Hen was his name, and he's a really fantastic professor. And he he was of mixed race, of half a half English and half something else from Thai, I think, or Chinese. And he was born a stateless person. He was born in the U.K., had no U.K. citizenship, had no whatever else citizenship. He had zero citizenship. It means, according to the world at large, the world, he did not exist. And that was really fucking hard. Like, you don't, mm. if you don't exist on paper in this current day, you are hosed and back again. That sounds like an Edward Snowden trapped in a Moscow airport. Yeah, so right. under this current system, I wouldn't l- wish unpaperedness for anyone. However, I would definitely wish, I think, getting us all un- undocumented. Like that transi- transition. Yeah. For example, again, my whole rant about the illegal immigration thing and conservatives wanting to create a police state because of that. Anyone heard of, uh, what is it called, the... The employer ID thing, Mm-mm. um, e verify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E I know, I know fucking verify. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. it's this like government thing that they use that when you apply for a job that checks your your U.S. citizenship and ability to work, and so it just it was basically it, something just to keep illegal immigrants from getting jobs, and it's just horrible. And it's like what we have to see if you're willing, if you like, if you want to exchange your labor for money or for anything. Well, we got to check with Washington D. Fucking C. Yeah. If you are legally authorized to perform this, if you are a and cool if you person, are, you can starve in the street. You freaking animal. Yeah, and one yeah. of my I lived with uh, or work illegally. I lived with a yeah. bunch of illegal immigrants in Phoenix, and as one guy, I mean, he was. I remember he'd go applying for jobs at places you know that wouldn't accept, that didn't need, you know, legality. But like, if he asked. If he asked how much he was being paid, how much the salary was, they just wouldn't hire him. Like literally, beca- and what are you going to do? Come go for legal recourse? There is none. You're you don't you don't care. Like what are you going to do? Get a legit job? Psh, fuck you. And it just the world is so hard like that, but it makes them so industrious and so so hardworking and innovative. And I think, and I wrote an article actually three years ago that I just republished today, or no, last week, about how. Illegal immigrants are the best of the best of America because they have to go through all these hurdles and all these hard things just to survive. And they're like the most innovative, the most hardworking, the most clever, just the best suited in this country. Mm -hmm. And it's like we're creating a race of super workers (laughs) just just by persecuting them. It's just like, you know, I mean, I think it's it's a cool thing to think about. But just the fact that. No one that you could call a person illegal. Right. It's like you could call an American resident illegal. I mean, it's it's one thing if it's like, well, he came here. This is America. We This guy came here. He's been here for like a year. He's not American. Get the fuck out. But it's like if he's been here for 10 years, he's been living here for 10, 20 years, unpapered, and you're trying to say this guy can't vote and, and influence elections of the country he lives in, it's like, well, because he didn't check that a right box. I mean, if you've been living in the U.S. for 18 years because you were born here, you can vote. If you've been living here 20 years illegally, oh, you just you can't vote even though you've been part of this damn country and this populace for that amount of time. That's just bullshit. You know, you are more American than the people who are younger than you. Who are well, just they're only born illegal the because right the fits. people in power deem them to be illegal. I mean, if you look at immigration from, like, the 
early and late 1800s you know the irish by the boatload just came over and like oh we're here yeah it crashed yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's basically it you know they didn't uh have like they didn't have to get documentation i mean they might have been a little bit of documentation but like nothing like huge or anything like that and they can just even though the the locals of their day would have signs that they say no irish need apply mm -hmm. but i mean that Those was like cops. that was local businesses doing it that wasn't like you know the the government saying you cannot hire an irish sure. yeah no, now legal immigrant. legal immigration like i don't think any illegal immigrant wants to come here illegally all right they just want to come here and they just can't because you know get in line there's 10 year waiting lists there's if you're unskilled labor you just can't come in because they would compete with the unions and of course the unions yeah. you know they won't do that or if you're from mexico if you're from for example, I have the uh, I've been in, in immigrant places, right? Even though I'm a dual US and New Mexico citizen, I had to go study in the UK and go through all their fucking draconian paperwork just to like get the right to be in their country for a year and then I flew out the day before my right to exist there expired and all that. And I remember when I was traveling from the UK to France, for example, myself and a Japanese citizen could do so easily. But my other roommate, who's from Burundi in the heart of Africa, he couldn't because he needed to apply for some extra permit because he's from one of those bad countries, dirty the countries. unwashed countries. Yeah, and it's like if you're – and I dated a French girl for many years, and getting her into the U.S. was very easy to come visit. And I got her intern to work in D.C. and stuff like that, and it was, it was fairly easy to go through the paperwork mess. Mexicans, no. All of a sudden, it's like you're the wrong kind of immigrant. It's mm. not just by your fucking place of birth. It just it's such bullshit that people would do this kind of thing. Yeah. And that's why I think the the amount of unpapered people in the free state, and I don't mean on an immigration status kind of thing, I mean in just everything, is pretty interesting. And I like that there's a whole world being created that doesn't revolve around being legit in the eyes of the government. And the more we can... Cr uh, strengthen that world and all work together i think that's like the next the next step if a business is operating in a fair way and taking care of its customers and you're working or it's you know whoever's buying that product or service or whatnot and you're working for that regardless if you're documented or if you're paying taxes or not that business is legitimate because there's an actual need and there's a there's a there's a reason for it to be in existence it's a legitimate job if you're not harming anyone just by working um, case in point with agorism in this community, like every agorist is a legitimate business, but in the eyes of the state, they are the criminals because they're not seeking permission and getting the papers to do so. Now, one last little thing on the immigration thing before we just go full agorist. It's funny, there's a lot of people who say about the Mexican, especially illegal immigrants, that we don't want them here. It's like, really, who's we? How about the people that rent property to them? How about the people that employ them? How about the people that mm. sell stuff to them? They seem to fucking want them here. Like, otherwise they wouldn't do it. And it's like, wait, you, maybe you and a f other fucking racists don't want them here. And the government doesn't want them here. But by and large, the United States of fucking America, the people, right. definitely want them here. Otherwise they wouldn't deal with them. Mm. Case in point, you know. I want warm people from around the world here, personally. Yeah, I want. I want you know, especially in New Hampshire because yes, please. No, no New offense Hampshire, to illegals. the Caucasians in our audience, but it's just too fucking white here, man. <laughs> it's very white. <laughs> <laughs> At least not in Manchester that much. But well, not not in our neck of the woods, right yeah. in this neighborhood. We got all the diversity yeah, right that here. That reminds me this this afternoon or this evening, walking over here, <clears throat> walking from Murphy's, the the two and a half blocks from Murphy's. I didn't have I, – I got off the plane this morning, I, so I went literally from the plane to work to here, and I didn't have my peace with me. And, like, walking through the neighborhood, I was like, ooh, like, I didn't feel <laughs> so comfortable. <laughs> that, like, as I normally that's do. why I train, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, definitely, but it was, it was a different feeling. I was like, hmm, like, normally I walk through here, and it's never occurred to me. Like, I don't even consider it, but. How long have you been uh, carrying? Yeah, I've had my concealed permit for a couple of years now. Okay. Do you always conceal carry? Uh, yeah, I never, I never, say. I never open carry. Let's say that much. Why not? Um, I just prefer. I don't like the attention, and um, yeah, I don't want to be questioned or anything like that. And um, I just like to secure. I just like that down. Yeah. Chill. Now, uh, open carrying me. I open carry only when I'm trying to 
when they open care at Pork Fest because that's just what you fucking do, right? <laughs> Everyone open carries at Pork Fest. Yeah, and if you don't have a piece, you borrow one and open carry. But <laughs> the other thing is just when you want to make a point or want to, like, do activism, mm-hmm. it's, like, it's part of it. Or when you want to, like I did a couple weeks ago, go into the Manchester PD and hand out Oath Keeper literature while carrying a firearm, you know? Like that's it. That's a good and start. we were swiftly kicked out of the Manchester. And not as place. swiftly. Not that swiftly. No. It How, took some that time. That still happened. What went down with that? What they tell you? That we cannot. That no one can be in there with a firearm. It's a new policy because again, though apparently, ca- doing apparently, that um, uh, I, Carrot said he called and talked to the, the chief or something or whatever, and um, he was saying that uh, it's that's. You can still do that. Just let them know, or some weird bullshit like that. I don't. Know. I think that sign was up there, considering that happened after Carrots was in there with his. Uh, they said, "Let us know first. I don't know. In. It was something like that that he was telling me that. <sighs> that uh, but open carrying does let people know. You come in, there's a fucking piece. Yeah, that's how. That yeah, you know. can they know. you can open carry into the to the state yeah. house in front of the governor of New Hampshire. But they don't want you doing that and, you know, going up to talk to a police yeah, I mean, officer. How are they going to know? It's like, well, they didn't know about it already. Well, they know it now. <laughs> no, it's amazing how many people I see. Because uh, you can always tell when someone's, especially during the summer. In the winter, you really can't. But in the summer, you can tell when someone's concealed carrying. Because you, you can see the bulge on their side and whatnot. It, it always... Depends on how, yeah, it depends, but for the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I notice it. If I see a bulge, I, I automatically think, like, well, that's that's probably a firearm. I already, I already assume, or like, maybe 15, <laughs> I would tumor. say, maybe, yeah. I have a tumor. Like, that, that, <laughs> needs to, that needs to be a new joke. It's like, are you concealed carrying? You're happy to see me. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I see people concealed carrying, and... Um, from where I'm from, like that's not even then that, that wasn't a, that's that's illegal to do so. So like sure. I see it here, and I'm used to it. But you know, among Liberty folk, but when I see like locals doing it, it's a, it's a whole nother like wow. Like there's people conceal carrying or even open carrying. I've I run into people open carrying like out in the wild of New Hampshire, and I'm like they're not Liberty folk. They're just people that yeah. are you know conceal like open carrying or conceal carrying. And now I'll yeah. put point this out. Which is an unfortunate. Where I came from, right before coming here in Arizona, open carrying is much more prevalent than here. I mean, here it's, you got it's all those not bad. all those illegals and drug smugglers and whatnot you coming you, you in. Get, you got to cut off a syllable. It's legal, illegals. Oh, okay. Them legals, America. Yeah, but it's like I see people in coffee shops just like <laughs> with the piece, and it's like eh, whatever. It's because it's uh, more rural, even. In New Hampshire, New Hampshire is semi-rural, and most of it's kind of out in the sticks. But you got little towns here, or there, everywhere. And out in Arizona, there's like Phoenix, which is huge, and there's nothing. I thought, I thought no- you were in Phoenix, no? Yeah, I was in Phoenix, but still, the whole state is just nothing. Mm. There's nothing in the whole state; it's just country. Mm. And then if you just see gun, who cares? Mm. I've seen people in the town of Douglas, Arizona, where my dad's from. I would see people walking around. So, some guy was just riding a horse down the sidewalk. With like a big six shooter on his on his hip, and it yeah. wasn't like he was a weird guy making a weird stunt. It's just some guy, right? Yeah. Ah, I yeah. just came from came from work. I'm just gonna go downstairs and get some groceries, and just like on his horse, and yeah. it's like that's pretty legit. But so I definitely would like to see more open carrying happening here, yeah. and because uh, one of those that cop locking incident when I was open carrying, some some lo- some immigrant probably for of African origin, I would assume, was like, what, what are you doing? Like, what's that? And I'm like, oh, I'm just, just carrying. And I was like, are you a cop or something? I'm like, no, it's just, this is New Hampshire. We just open carry. It's like, wow. Like, <laughs> there it was, was like, it was an ooh. educational <laughs> moment for this person. That was kind of like when uh, we were coming back from Pork Fest and we stopped at that Liberty gas station where there's like all this like Liberty propaganda everywhere. And uh, Neil was uh, there. Neil and Connor. He was paying guy. for his gas with Bitcoin. And there was like some freedom uh, sl- uh, slogan behind him, written in chalk on the wall. There's a Bitcoin accepted here logo. He's got his firearm on his side, and this little girl comes. I captured this on film, and She's it's just like, like amazing. Like like literally, like, you know, four year old girl, and he goes, "Hey, Six. miss." Yeah, he goes, hey, mister, what's with the gun? Are you a sheriff or something like that? And he goes, oh, well, you know, just like how I have insurance on my car, or protection and whatnot. Seat belt. Or seatbelt. Like, this is just for my personal protection. And he was really, it was like this magical libertarian, like, <laughs> nexus moment of, like, all these different things happening at once. And it was just, like, incredible to, like, 
yeah, capture. Here, here in the community, we refer to said incident as a liberty gasm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was magical. Yeah, it was magical and liberty gasmic. For sure. All right, we are coming up at the close pretty soon here. Yeah, so, so Nate, we yes. always like to allow our guests to whore themselves out. So, yeah, yeah, this is where you yeah. shake it. Well, you, do you, if you want to throw your any, Snapchat out there to all the ladies, go f- feel free and go ahead and do that. Yeah, but go visit Nate at nateshugeload.com. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so, I don't know if we want to evolve perf- personal business in this, but if you want to pimp anything you do out, whether yowl or anything else, this is the time to do it. Go for it. Boom. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Not much for sh- for self promotion, but I will do it shamelessly right now. No shame. Um, yeah. So uh, Nathaniel Slife on Facebook. That's S L I F F E. So that's probably like the best way to reach me if you want to uh, connect. And then uh, also I do. Um, well, you can you can you can talk talk to me there. But um, I um, I cover New Hampshire for Young Americans for Liberty as their state chair. So we're working here to, to uh, build chapters on college campuses and try to open uh, students' eyes to liberty, and that's going really well so far. I just took that over in uh, January, so just you know several months now. It's going good. Um, so yeah, we're doing that, and then I, I um, do paint contracting. So anybody who is a homeowner or a business owner or you you have anything uh, that needs maintenance in that regard. Uh, I, I, uh, and you accept Bitcoin. I accept Bitcoin. Yes, yes. for my painting service. And Nate's paint is indeed great. It's quite great. I mean, uh, I'm going to toot my own horn, but it's pretty damn good. I'll toot it for you. Thank you. Boom. All right, Shire Dude, where can everyone find your latest yeah, man. Uh, orgasmic, <laughs> uh, trippiest shit Trippy as sh- motherfuck. God Shire, damn. Yeah, ShireDude.com. And episode six is called Ash after Ash the Studio Cat. Who's in the studio somewhere? She's sneaking around. She's by, um, she's by my feet. It's, it's really warm and all. Really freaking trippy. And of course, Rob Mathias is the, like the star of that episode as well. Dolch. Yeah, you just have me like Dolch. repeating <laughs> one word over and over and over again. Rob Next Mathias. to Josie saying yeah. selfie. Right. Was it? Dolch. And also, uh, I will be as planned live streaming this Friday the uh, checkpoint. I hope this Manchester. checkpoint actually happens this I, time. I think it will. I think it will too. I got there, a good feeling it, about this yeah, one. I can, it's, it's in the air. So now, what what do they call it when you like you blue ball cop blockers? <laughs> blue block, blue block. I don't know. Michael Blue Block. Okay, there we go. now we're going a little bit. Is crazy. it called cop block blocking? Cop block blocking. What? Cop block blocking. Cop blockception. Shh, okay. Um. This yeah. guy has a website. Yeah, vrebel dot com. I'm <laughs> gonna be posting to that and whatnot. Um, gotta get on that more. But uh, also. Uh, I will be in, again, uh, I will be in California, second week, in Anaheim, LA, hit me up, Orange County, Liberty on the Rocks, Peoples, and we'll have some fun, have some drinks. That's you, Rob Free Pube, whatever your name is. There you go. (laughs) Gross. Yeah, I am the Desert Links, the desertlinks.com, all the cool stuff. And guess what? The Rebel Love Show is funded entirely by viewers like you and our own little chump change that happens here and there, so... We throw up a big Bitcoin thing at the end of the show. Don't let Please. these guys lie to you. They pay for it mostly out of their pocket. So hook, yeah, we can, yeah up. we the, yeah up. this hook is uh we're, we're we're in the hole paying for this. So if you want to help us out, send us a, some millibits right now because those will turn into send a decent some chunk. Fucking, some whole bits, man. Yeah, Come yeah. On. Send a couple bits. <laughs> yeah, just couple, all you have to do a couple do coins. Is, just send some. I mean, it's like you, you tip your. Fucking waitress for like forgetting your order yeah. twice. So can you just like? <laughs> How about this? If you listen to this thing and entire entirely, and you don't if you don't donate two dollars in Bitcoin, you're a fucking asshole. Oh, don't yeah. don't be, don't be a Stefan <laughs> Molyneux. No, no, you can donate less than I, that. No, no, We're okay. not gonna rip you up. I don't know Stefan Molyneux. If you don't <laughs> fuck that guy. Okay, so <laughs> Molyneux is all like, uh, what is this is, two dollar donation? Yeah. Oh, he does that. Yeah, he 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 went on a, a rampage about oh, someone really? saying so two dollar donation. That was a totally original thought. No, he actually there's a huge YouTube video. About it. Hate yeah, on people yeah. for the amount they donate. It's like the world you know needs what? my show. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> if I donate anything, that's cool. I'll, I'll appreciate. It. And if, if you, you don't donate, go like us on Facebook. If then. you watch the whole episode and you don't donate, you're a fucking cunt. Yeah. But if you're yeah. okay with being a cunt, I'm not gonna right lambast you. Got, you have that option. Like. Or be a cunt, yeah, yeah, I guess. Right. There you go. You can be a cunt. There's a. This is America. You can be a fucking cunt if you want to. Okay. Live, live the dream. 
That That's escalated great. quickly. All right. All right. Well, Cheers. thank you very much for being our audience today. Thank you very much, Nate, for being great on our Ooh. show. Ooh. Thank you, Shire Dude, for being dude like as ever. And thank you for our lovely studio audience, which you can't really see here, but we're going to be mm-hmm. drinking with in just a moment. And we are out. Peace. Peace. Peace.